Now, last night, the Dáil passed a motion, a Sinn Féin motion, uh, that recognises Israel's illegal settlements as a de facto annexation of Palestinian land. Ophir Karif is Israel's ambassador to Ireland and he joins me now. Ambassador, you're welcome to the hard shoulder. Uh, welcome back to the hard shoulder. We spoke to you recently. What is your reaction to this Dáil motion? First of all, good afternoon. Pleasure to be here and thank you for inviting me again. Um, about the motion, or indeed the new Irish uh, position uh, um, that was reflected yesterday in that uh, in that motion, um, we don't accept it. I think this Irish uh, position is uh, not constructive for the peace process. Uh, it touches upon one of the uh, uh, issues, the main issues that are supposed to be dealt with in final status negotiations with the Palestinians, and that is the future of the Israeli communities in Judea and Samaria, what is called the West Bank. Um, This kind of a resolution or um, an agreement on the future of those communities can be reached only in direct negotiations between the two sides and in no other way. This is how every, each and every peace process that we've achieved so far with six Arab countries was achieved. There's no other way around it. So we believe this this, uh, resolution I mean, this motion and this new mm. Irish uh, position takes our, takes us away from direct negotiations. Is, is this a new Irish p- position? Is it not the case that the current Irish government and, and previous Irish governments have raised the issue of Israeli settlements time and time again with you and with previous ambassadors from Israel? Well, absolutely. This is one of the things that, uh, one of the issues that are uh, in discussion, have been in discussion with, also between uh, Ireland and Israel. We don't share the same point of view. Um, but it's um, not a new but, position, but, then, but is this it? Is, but no, it is. It is. I mean, the, the, this uh, statement that uh, um, the existence of those uh, Jewish communities or Israeli communities uh, um, constitute what it's called here, uh, what was what's called the de facto annexation, is uh, is new, and it's not positive, and it's not. Uh, it does not contrib- contribute anything to the peace process. How is it not de facto annexation? What has happened in the West Bank? The situation in the West Bank is a temporary, it's, a, it's not a, a, a final and it's not a, the, the, uh, if the final status or the final status of the, of the land. This is still uh, disputed and the future of this part of the land is disputed. And this is why we have to renew negotiations with the Palestinians, which unfortunately have been refusing to do so for many years. So now. there's a possibility all these settlements will be dismantled? I, I don't know what, when and where, if at all. But if we look at the past... They're not going to be. If we look at the past, which is what we can draw on, you could see that whenever real peace and real chance of peace was on the agenda, Israel knew how to uh, have to make very painful concessions and also uproot Jewish communities. And we saw it happening in the Sinai, mm. in the framework of our peace agreement with uh, Egypt, and we saw it in Gaza for, for in, these two, na- in 2005 when we uprooted quite a few Israeli communities with thousands of uh, Israelis that used to live there and none left. So if we draw on the past and on, the, on very rec- relatively recent experience, we know that Israel knows to make uh, the painful concessions when real peace is on the agenda. Well, if for these not to be considered uh, de facto annexation, they have to be temporary. It's the only uh, obvious explanation. That's logic. In what way could you describe the uprooting of Palestinian families out of their homes, off their land, the destruction of their homes and the construction of Israeli settlements as temporary? Well, first of all, the status of the let us remember the status of the land doesn't it doesn't change, and we when we say temporary, maybe it's temporary, but one of the other major issues that have to be agreed on. So maybe no, it's temporary. It's, it's if it, it's maybe important. it's maybe it's permanent then, and if it's permanent, no, no. it's annexation. No, let me just finish here because it's important. One of the major issues that is going to be discussed in any final status agreement is the issue of borders, of lines, the final borders between. Israel and whatever you have on the Palestinian side, have this has not been decided. This is one of the main issues for the final status negotiations. 
you, you could no. make a lie of the Irish government uh, uh, immediately, their position immediately, and accept that the borders would be the 1967 borders. The borders will be decided only in the final status negotiation, the negoti- during the negotiations of the final status yeah. agreement, and not before that. The green line, as we call it, the line that separates the West Bank from Israel itself, it's not a border. It's, not a, it's an armistice line drawn by a Jordanian general and an Israeli general in 1949 as an armistice line. This is all it is. The, the line, the exact demarca- demarcation of any future border whenever such a thing comes to happen is still to be negotiated. So you cannot say that this, uh, uh, whether a certain community will stay or will go. I still I, I still struggle to understand the logic because what you're accepting or what you what you seem to be saying is that, listen, those borders haven't been finalised yet. It may be a case that when you draw those borders, these settlements would be within Israel, that that would that would qualify them post hoc as annexation. I think that if we look at the at the situation, the reality that we all thrive for, where a final agreement has been reached and the final borders if that if this is what's going to be will be reached yeah then whatever stays in israel is in israel and whatever does not stay in israel is not israel but is is, is what you're doing now not encroaching on palestinian land so that when it comes to drawing yeah. those borders that palestine gets smaller and smaller and smaller and israel the, the gets process, bigger and bigger and bigger no i'm sorry the the process uh, of um, here we have to, we must go a bit 2 minutes of history here because it's important it's one continuum yeah okay it's it's, it's one uh, big continuum Israelis and Palestinians, and before the state of Israel, Jews and uh, and Arabs, have claims, have parallel claims for the same piece of land and basically the whole of it. And I speak here on what used to be mandatory Palestine mm. until 1940, uh, until 1948. In 1947, the United Nations presented the the UN General Assembly presented what it's called the, the Partition Plan, which was practically the first two-state solution for uh, the establishment, as it was called then, an mm. Arab state and a Jewish state. This was the terminology at the time. This was totally rejected by the Palestinians and the entire Arab world with that waged war to prevent this, um, this resolution from being implemented. The Israeli side, I mean, the Jewish national leadership and then the Israeli accepted it and uh, the, the state of Israel was, uh, was created. Mm. This long historic process of finding some kind of a solution for the two peoples, the Jewish people and the Palestinian people, to Israelis and Palestinians, to live side by side on the same piece of land is ongoing. Yes. Is ongoing. The uh, Israeli and the Jewish claim for the land is exactly as the is the, exactly as valid, if not more than than that, than the Palestinian one, and this is a process that is ongoing. Why is you, why future, is why is why is the Israeli claim on the land on land currently occupied by Palestinians more valid than the Palestinian claim to that land? We see, I mean, the history of the Jewish people at that specific part of the land, by the way, goes back more than three thousand years. And I'm not speaking about only biblical sources here. I'm speaking also about archaeological and external historical sources. And of course, what we know, what we are, this is part of our for our identity. It's not foreign land to us. Yeah. It's not new land. Actually, the the area of what is now known as the West Bank, much more than the coastal areas, for example, where the cradle of the Jewish people. This is where the Jewish people mm. was formed as a nation back 3,000 back, uh, 3, years uh, uh, ago. So this is not new. We have a claim, a very valid claim, and this is part of our identity, of our nationality, yeah. of, our, of what we are. What hope is there for any peace if you're saying, though, that the land that is currently occupied by Palestinians, that the Israeli state has a more valid claim to that land. This is our position. There are the Palestinians there and they they have their own positions and we acknowledge that they have them. The fact that we have and we believe in what we in what we claim 
is one thing, but we do acknowledge that there, there is no hope. Path. There is no hope there for a two-state solution. There is, there is hope for a solution for the future uh, uh, coexistence states, be- between Israel and a, Palestinians. A, within, a, within a greater state of Israel or with two separate states? No, I don't think that within a greater state of Israel. I mean, so two separate some, states. Some, some kind of arrangement has to, be, has to be found there, an arrangement that is based on mutual recognition. Two states. Mutual recognition of each other's uh, uh, aspirations. State is one of the options that, uh, that is on the table. Okay. No, no doubt about it. Uh, and the longer this goes on, the smaller and smaller that Palestinian state will get because of the continued expansion the, of Israel. The, the Based longer, on what you said is your more valid claim to that land. The, the, longest, the longer it's been uh, dragged, the longer the Palestinians refuse to come to the negotiating table, It will be... So it's their it, own it, fault. It, it, it's their own fault bad. if they have no land left. It, no, this is not what I'm saying. I'm saying that they have to take responsibility for their own future and come and discuss their own future. We know that they are there. We acknowledge their, that they have their own aspirations and these have to be accommodated. But we must do it at, at the uh, uh, negotiating table. And if Ireland wants to help him in any way, I believe that this is exactly in that, in, bringing, in helping bring the Palestinians back to the negotiating table. Can I ask before I, I, I let you go, uh, Ambassador, and like I said, we thank you for your time to come in. Uh, your reaction when you heard there was a separate motion, now uh, this motion won't go anywhere, uh, calling for you to be expelled? Well, I think it's very sad. Um, it's sad for me as an Israeli, as a diplomat. And uh, actually, I think that uh, the Irish people should be sad uh, when uh, this kind of claim comes out in the, in the Irish, par- in Irish parliament. Because it goes against, all no, it's only motivated by hate. There's nothing behind, the, anything else behind, it, behind that. Um, it, does not, uh, uh, it does not help anyone, certainly not a single uh, Palestinian. And it, of course, it goes against the very principle of, uh, of uh, communication, of communicating, of discourse between uh, government, states and, and peoples.